<clears throat> Alright guys, <clears throat> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful postcard perfect day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom, uh, it is now Friday, January 14th. 2022 I I keep hearing some rumors like from up at my place in New York about some winter storm some blizzard I think it's going to be three degrees below zero with a high of 10 degrees and a wind chill factor of 20 degrees below zero at my place in New York and uh, I have to suffer it's going to be a bone-chilling 68 degrees today here in the Oasis of Freedom. I knew I should have bought a place farther south. Yes. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> I, know, I know you guys have a lot of pity for me suffering this 68 degree wind chill. But uh, since it is Friday, January 14th. It is, I'm going to do what I do every Friday if I can survive this bitter cold and uh, bring you today's ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply uh, <clears throat> open up my email from mongabay.com from Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is on the minds of Rhett and the gang. And we're going to start what is on the mind of Rhett is that? What is it a bear? Is it a bear? What is it? I think you need to go get that bear like that. Get that bear like that. Uh, anyway, Sancho is off chasing what he thinks is a bear. Uh, <clears throat> well, we check in with Manga Bay. And what we find on Rhett Butler's brain is shit. Literally shit on the brain. Leading off <clears throat> the thick of it, delving into the neglected global impacts of human waste. I was just mentioning in Iran a couple of days ago about how North Koreans are turning their own feces into fertilizer to uh, help stave off the impending uh, famine in North Korea. So maybe this is an, I, an idea for the rest of the planet. <clears throat> Take it away. Though little talked about, our species has a monumental problem disposing of its human waste. A recent modeling study finds that Wastewater adds about 6.2 million tons of nitrogen <coughs> to coastal waters worldwide every year, contributing significantly to harmful algae blooms, eutrophication, and of course, ocean dead zones. The study mapped 135,000 watersheds planet-wide and found that just 25 of those account for almost one-half the nitrogen pollution contributed by human waste. Those 25 were pinpointed in both developing world and De the developing and developed world and include the Mississippi River watershed right here in the good old United States, which of course is accounting for that giant ocean dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. <clears throat> Human waste, you're not even counting uh, the stuff that used to be food, which includes pharmaceuticals and even microplastics contained in feces and urine is a major public health hazard causing disease outbreaks and putting biodiversity at risk. 
sewage is impacting estuary fish nurseries, coral reefs, and seagrasses, a habitat that stores CO2. Human waste is often perceived as mostly a developing world problem, but the developed world is just as responsible, largely due to antiquated municipal sewage systems that combine rainwater and wastewater in the same pipes. As a result, intense precipitation events can you say climate change, regularly flush raw sewage into waterways in the U.S., U.K., and E.U. Yep, yep, yep. So now we know that. Then uh, <clears throat> this is Manga Bay's uh, obituary to biologist Tom Lovejoy. I'm 90% sure I had an interview with Tom Lovejoy uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, anyway, R.I.P. Thomas Lovejoy uh, never mentions what Thomas died of at the age of 80. Anyway, alright, <clears throat> we are going, I'm going to try to skip over the hopium. <clears throat> I will have to do a hopium roundup tomorrow. Uh, okay. Anyway, guys, there is a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, stick to the doom and gloom. Uh, good Lord, we have more uh, dead doomers. Now, I mentioned we lost E.O. Wilson and Tom Lovejoy. And now we need to say... Uh, R.I.P. to Rebecca McCaffrey. McCaffrey, I'm sorry, I've never heard of Rebecca. Rebecca McCaffrey was the North American president for the Society for Conservation Biology. Uh, uh, no, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rebecca, uh, I'm sorry that the rumors uh, of your death have been greatly over. Uh, this is Rebecca's uh, eulogies to uh, both E.O. Wilson and Tom Lovejoy. Um, all right. Uh, we have more hopium uh, from coming out of Guyana. Yes, I will maybe save that for tomorrow. Uh, all right. We have Joko Widodo. Yes, saving the planet. Uh, anyway, guys, I, uh, I, I did not, usually what I do is, before I do this rant, I, I go through the stories and uh, trying to, it, 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 it looks like today's Manga Bay is a combination of a well-deserved eulogy to Tom Lovejoy and E.O. Wilson, and other than that, every single story uh, coming out of Manga Bay this week is hopium. Uh, anyway, I might as well just close up this computer and come back tomorrow and make uh, my, my, my ecological meltdown roundup rant, the hopium roundup. All right, finally, 
a an honest story about the wild cat trade, particularly looking at cheetahs. Uh, data collected by researchers show that the cheetah trade has actively continued. Yes. <clears throat> The high number involved in this illegal cheetah trade, uh, blah, 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 CITES determined, um, anyway, this is getting uh, very complicated very quick, as exotic pets are considered a status symbol in the Gulf states, meaning not the Gulf states here in the U.S., but you know around the Persian Gulf, fueled by its popularity of posts on social media, most people fail to understand that these pets were acquired illegally and the trend will not stop. All right, I am glad to see we have emerged from the fog of hopium back to reality. Let's go down to the Brazilian Cerrado. Uh, records a six-year deforestation high. The satellite-based deforestation monitoring program focused on Brazil's vast Cerrado savanna may end in April because of lack of funding. Uh, yes, uh, and it's final uh, as it winds up looking at a six-year high. Sharing scientists' concern is the agribusiness sector, which relies on the data to prove that its commodity is deforestation-free. <laughs> yes. Um, News of the impending demise of the monitoring program comes one week after its latest data release showed an area six times the size of the city of Sao Paulo was cleared between August 2020 and July of 2021, the highest deforestation rate in the Cerrado since 2015. All right. Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg has a new rain frog being named after her. So Greta Thunberg, she does look a little bit like a Panamanian rain frog. Good for Greta. All right. What is the latest climate change news coming out of sub-Saharan Africa? Coastal deforestation fuels more frequent storms in West Africa. Storms are hitting the densely populated coastal pocket of West Africa twice as frequently as 30 years ago. Declining forest cover is fueling this increased storm frequency. <clears throat> With the loss of forests, the daytime temperature difference between land and sea is widening, generating stronger winds and feeding storms. Uh, The coastal location of deforestation here is typical of many tropical deforestation hotspots, and the processes highlighted here are likely to be of wider global relevance. Yes, do you think so? <clears throat> you will not believe that this, but despite sanctions, U.S. companies are still importing Myanmar teak. 
U.S. timber companies undercut sanctions to import nearly 1,600 metric tons of teak wood from Myanmar last year. Uh, there you go. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> here is a commentary about Indonesia's rivers. <coughs> yes, Indonesian President Joko Widodo, yes, Joko Widodo has touted hydropower as key to his country's transition away from coal, which currently dominates the national energy mix. Yes. Uh, and of course, hydropower, you know, being one of the number one poster children of the clean green energy uh, revolution. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's the latest update on the Indonesia's depleting fish stocks. Yes. The Indonesian government has drafted a new regulation to allow <clears throat> foreign investment back into the, I love how they call this, the capture fisheries sector. <clears throat> Observers warn this new rule could lead to the return of rampant illegal and destructive fishing by foreign by foreign vessels and foreign funded entities in the country's waters. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, what is going on in the Philippines? Philippine groups slam the cruel Christmas gift as open pit mining ban is lifted. Yes. On December 25th, the Philippine Environment Secretary, there is the, uh, the, the oxymoron of the day, the Philippine Environment Secretary issued an order overturning a ban on open pit mining. Yes. This follows last April's decision by President Rodrigo Duterte to lift a 2012 moratorium on new mining agreements. <clears throat> the moves have been welcomed by the mining industry in the Philippines but slammed by environmental and indigenous rights groups as a, quote, cruel Christmas gift and another blow against an already gasping state of our Philippine environment. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <clears throat> Take a uh, yes, a a look at Guinea Bissau's green turtle population. Yep, yep, yep. Like everywhere else, <clears throat> sea turtles in Guinea Bissau are threatened by capture and fishing nets, hunting, and over harvesting of their eggs. Uh, they missed sea level rise, which will completely put all of the sea turtle nesting sites in Guinea-Bissau under the water. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> what is going on in Bolivia? Yes, in Bolivia, indigenous groups fear the worst 
from a da new dam project on the Benny River. More than 5,000 indigenous people will be impacted by flooding from the construction of two dams in Bolivia. The dam has been put on hold for more than 50 years, but the current administration of Presidente Luis Acre has now revived it as a national priority. Yes. If completed, the reservoirs, plural, for the project would cover a combined area larger than Bolivia's capital of La Paz and inundate an area that is home to thousands of animal and plant species. And once again, do keep in mind that hydropower is being to touted as one of the main cornerstones of the green, clean uh, UN sustainability goals. We are going to save the planet by drowning hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of our fellow Earthlings and a few thousand uh, humans in, along the way. D, D, uh, more hopium, uh, more hopium. Okay, let's look at the impact of artificial light in the ocean at night. Researchers recently released the first global atlas that quantifies artificial light at night on underwater habitats. This artificial light from urban environments along the coast can have far-reaching impacts on a range of marine organisms that have evolved over millions of years to be extremely sensitive to natural light such as moonlight. The researchers found that at a depth of one meter, almost two million square kilometers, otherwise known as 734,000 square miles of the world's coastal oceans were exposed to artificial light at night. Yep, yep, yep. All right, what's going on with the newest big mining project in Chile? A recent approved mining project on the Chilean coast has sparked concerns from scientists about the potential impacts on the marine mammals living in the nearby Humboldt archipelago. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, mainly looking at ship strikes, you know, hitting whales. Uh, the mining project was previously rejected. Uh, after scientists raise their concerns. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, there you go. Then we have the uh, latest story about Indonesia's addiction to coal. Yes. Uh, Coal miners in Indonesia have been shirking their obligation to allocate 25% of their output for the domestic market, leading to a critical shortage of the fossil fuel for power generation in, uh, inside Indonesia. Uh, 
you know, as Indonesia, as the coal miners can make a hell of a lot more money selling their coal to other countries so they can ramp up their coal use. I'm sure China being their number one uh, customer, kind of like the U.S. selling our uh, natural gas to Europe because the gas drillers on our public lands in the U.S. can make more money selling the gas to Europe, which means, of course, that our coal use here in the U.S. is skyrocketing. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> Energy policy experts say banning coal exports does not address the root of the problem, which is Indonesia's over-reliance on coal. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... <clears throat> Analysts point out that years of coddling the coal industry have led to the current situation and that there is no sense of urgency about moving away from coal. Well, except for uh, putting in all of those hydroelectric uh, plants. Okay, let's get right. I love it when we find the word doom in a headline. Cattle boom in Brazil spells doom for the Amazon rainforest. Boom spells doom. Government sh data show the number of cattle in Acre, a state in the Brazilian Amazon, increased by 8.3% in 2020, putting that one state's herd at more than 3 0.8 million beef cattle, otherwise known as four times the human population. The cattle industry is a key driver of Acre's economy and aligns with the state's aims of promoting and expanding agricultural development within the region. Hmm. Activists say they are concerned the increase, you know, by 8.3% will lead to further environmental damage in the state, which this year recorded its highest deforestation rate in 18 years. Experts, you have to be an expert to figure this out. Non-experts could never figure this out on their own. Experts say Acre's cattle growth is currently not sustainable and will lead to further deforestation in the Amazon. Hmm, do you think so? Okay, back to Indonesia. Saving the planet with sustainable fish farming. Indonesia plans to have a network of 136 aquaculture villages dedicated to fish farming by the end of this year, where they will be producing namely shrimp, lobster, crab, and seaweed. Yes. Indonesia is one of the top exporters of farmed seafood, but fish farming in the country has long come at the expense of carbon-rich mangrove forest and other important coastal ecosystems, which of course are mowed down to make way for the sustainable fish farming. Of course, it is aquaculture like hydropower and biofuels are three of the main cornerstones of the UN's sustainable development goals. <clears throat> what is going on <clears throat> with forest fires in Bolivia? 
in the first 10 months of 2021, forest fires in Bolivia destroyed nearly two and a half million hectares, otherwise known as 6.2 million acres of forest in the state of Santa Cruz alone, exceeding the figure for the whole of 2020. Yes, in Santa Cruz, 58% of the burned land was in protected areas. Yes, stoked in part by temperatures reaching as high as 43 degrees C, otherwise known as 109 degrees. Across Bolivia, forest fires had affected 3.4 million hectares, otherwise known as 8.4 million acres. Uh, there you go. All right. Here, here we go again. This is uh, 1984. This is George Orwell, alive and well. Uh, as we go back to Indonesia, where proposal could redefine palm oil driven deforestation as reforestation in Indonesia. Indonesia's leading forestry university is making the case for oil palm trees to be classified as a forest crop, a move that would see existing oil palm plantations counting as forest and the establishment of new oil palm plantations as reforestation. Yes. Uh, the proposal also argues that oil palm plantations should count towards Indonesia's carbon sequestration goals despite the fact that clearing rainforest for oil palm plantations leads to vast amounts of emissions. The move has been criticized by academics and NGOs who say it could pave the way for the un fettered clearing of Indonesia's remaining forest. They say that if accepted by the government, which it will be, the plan would legitimize the oil palm plantations currently operating illegally inside forest areas. So what is the world's most heavily uh, exploited fish? Uh, anyway, I think, uh, oh, I guess it's just talking about any fish living in the Humboldt, cur Humboldt current. A new report using core samples from the seabed has determined that the Humboldt current system off the coast of Peru was home to smaller fish during the last interglacial period. Um, anyway, this gets too technical too quickly. Basically, the smaller fish off of Peru, which I think mainly talking about anchovies, I'm guessing here, are pretty well doomed. Uh, okay, more hopium, uh, which we want. Uh, anyway, guys, we go back to the hopium round up. Uh, 
So what is going on in New Guinea? This is just an overall. New Guinea makes up less than 0.5% of the world's land mass, but is estimated to contain as much as 10% of our planet's global biodiversity. However, experts are worried that extractive industries threaten not just its vast biodiversity, but also the human knowledge and culture of its original habitants. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, do you think so? From New Guinea to Madagascar. Uh, looking at uh, the Anjo Robi and Gavo forest is one of the few remaining primary forests left in the central highlands of Madagascar. Home to a number of rare and endemic species, this last shred of primary forest is undergoing a rapid decline driven primarily by fire. We're going to close with this quote uh, by an indigenous woman in Ecuador named Josefina Tunki. Take it away, Josefina. Quote, if we have to die in defense of the land, we have to die. Close quote. Yes, uh, Josefina Tunki, the first woman to provide over the Shuar Arotom people in Ecuador, faces death threats due to her opposition to mining on indigenous lands. The Ecuadorian government <clears throat> has granted 165 concessions to mining companies for copper, gold, and molybdenum, that covers 56% of her territory in the Condor Mountain Range. <clears throat> yep, yep. And I guess we will sum it up here. If we have to die in defense of the land, we have to die I am going to make the prediction that Josefina Tunki will probably have her prophecy come true and that Josefina Tunki will probably get a bullet through her head sometime soon. Let's hope I am wrong. But anyway, I have got to wrap up this week's... Uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant and uh, get out there and uh, sunbathe here in the oasis of freedom. What do you think little dog? Are you ready to go take a sun bath on this glorious day in the collapse? Bye guys. Man, would you look at this day. Pretty outrageous. Bye, guys.